In this video, we are going to talk about the hormones that are produced by the gonads. So the gonads in males are the testes, and in females it is the ovaries. So let's look at the males first. The gonads are controlled by the hypothalamus and the pituitary. The hypothalamus regulates the pituitary gland by producing hormones that go into the bloodstream, that go through this portal vessel system. When the hypothalamus makes the hormone gonadotropin releasing hormone, that will signal the anterior pituitary to produce follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone. Now both of these hormones will impact the gonads. And in males, there are two cell types in the testes that we're going to look at. Follicle stimulating hormone will bind to cells called the Sertoli cells. These are the cells that surround the germ cells that develop into sperm. And so the Sertoli cells are really important for promoting meiosis. Luteinizing hormone is going to bind to cells called Leydig cells. These are the cells that are going to produce testosterone. In males, estrogen is also produced. Some of the testosterone will be converted into estrogen. In females, more of the testosterone is converted into estrogen, but both of these hormones are produced by the Leydig cells in males. Now, if we were to take a cross section of the testis and look inside, we would find these seminiferous tubules. These tubules are where the germ cells develop into sperm. So all along the outer edge of the seminiferous tubules, the germ cells will start to go through meiosis, and as they go through the meiotic divisions, they will differentiate into sperm. And then they can flow through these tubules, and they can go to the epididymis, which then connects to tubes, the vas deferens, that will allow the sperm to be ejaculated out of the body. The Sertoli cells are also inside the seminiferous tubules, and they surround the germ cells. The Leydig cells are found in between the seminiferous tubules in these regions here. These are the ones that make the testosterone. Now when testosterone is produced, it has a negative feedback regulation mechanism. So testosterone, when it increases, it's going to signal the hypothalamus and also the pituitary gland. When testosterone levels are higher, it will tell the hypothalamus to decrease the production of gonadotropin releasing hormone. It'll tell the anterior pituitary to decrease FSH and LH. How it tells the anterior pituitary to decrease FSH is because testosterone will stimulate the Sertoli cells and it will cause the Sertoli cells to make a hormone called inhibin. And then when testosterone levels are low, that will trigger the hypothalamus to produce gonadotropin releasing hormone. So the whole regulation cycle is based on negative feedback. Now, if we look at females, it's a little bit different. In females, the hypothalamus also makes gonadotropin releasing hormone. That will also stimulate the anterior pituitary gland through this vascular portal system to produce follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone. These hormones are going to target different cells in the ovary compared to the testis. In the ovary, this is where the follicles develop and the egg matures, and when the egg is ovulated, it will move through the fallopian tube. It will become fertilized at some point in time while it's traveling down the fallopian tube, and if fertilization occurs, it will implant in the uterus. These follicles have different cell types, and we'll look at those in one second, but the follicle-stimulating hormone is going to target cells called granulosa cells. These are similar to the Sertoli cells in males that help to promote meiosis. Granulosa cells surround the egg and help to promote the development of the follicle that will lead to ovulation. Luteinizing hormone is going to target cells called theca cells. 
and these cells surround the follicles and these are the cells that are going to produce the estrogen. Now remember that males and females both make testosterone and estrogen and there's more aromatase in females to increase the production of estrogen from testosterone. So females make more estrogen and males have more testosterone, but both have both. So we're going to look at how the follicle develops. In females, we have generally a 28 day cycle where the follicle is going to develop, ovulation will occur, and then we're going to lead up towards menstruation. And this happens approximately every 28 days and there are varying factors in different females. But approximately in females the hormones have a cyclical pattern so there's periods of time during the cycle when they're elevated and periods of time when they're decreased so we're going to take a little bit of a look at what the follicles look like inside the ovary and how those cycles occur inside the ovary we have primary follicles these developed while the female was an embryo so there's millions and millions of follicles that developed while the female was in embryonic development. And then when puberty occurs, once a month approximately, these follicles will start to develop. And the dominant follicle each month will be the one that fully grows into a tertiary mature follicle and one egg will be released. So in a normal cycle, we have approximately 14 days from zero to 14 until ovulation, and then approximately 14 days to start the cycle again. This phase over here where the follicles are developing is called the follicular phase. And the phase after ovulation is called the luteal phase. Now when the follicle is developing, the oocyte is inside the center of the follicle. The cells that are surrounding the oocyte are the granulosa cells and the theca cells. The granulosa cells are on the inside and the theca cells are around on the outside edge. Now as the theca cells start to develop, they produce luteinizing hormone receptors. When luteinizing hormone is released by the anterior pituitary, it will stimulate the theca cells to make testosterone, which is converted into estrogen. That estrogen is going to stimulate the growth of the granulosa cells. More granulosa cells are going to stimulate more LH receptors on more theca cells that will increase the stimulation and the production of estrogen. So the process during the follicular phase, those hormones are regulated by a positive feedback mechanism. So there's more estrogen being produced because there's more granulosa cells and more theca cells. The granulosa cells stimulate the theca cells to respond to the LH. And then the LH is going to stimulate the production of estrogen. And then more granulosa cells grow. And this occurs during that whole follicular phase until ovulation occurs. Once ovulation occurs, which is actually stimulated by a surge in LH, okay, estrogen does not cause ovulation. After the egg is ovulated, now all of those cells, those follicular cells that surrounded the egg, they become what's called the corpus luteum. That corpus luteum is important because it is going to make a hormone called progesterone. So let's just have a look. The egg is ovulated at about day 14. And then the leftover cells are called the corpus luteum. These cells are going to produce progesterone. Progesterone is very important for maintaining the uterine lining in case pregnancy occurs. If the egg is fertilized and then implants, then progesterone will maintain that lining and it will support embryonic development. If pregnancy occurs, progesterone will then be produced by the placenta to continue to maintain pregnancy. If pregnancy does not occur, then the corpus luteum will regress and the cycle will repeat. So I want to point out a couple of cool things. 
So we're gonna show you a graph of how the estrogen and progesterone increase and decrease during the cycle and how that relates to the follicular phase and the luteal phase. Over here, as the follicle is developing, estrogen is increasing, luteinizing hormone is increasing, and the follicle is developing until ovulation. That is over here, the follicular phase. Estrogen is increasing during the follicular phase until ovulation occurs. Progesterone is not increasing during the follicular phase. Once ovulation occurs and the corpus luteum is formed, then progesterone will increase. Progesterone will increase in case fertilization occurs and the uterine lining needs to be maintained for pregnancy. When ovulation occurs, estrogen will dip down for a short period of time, but then it will also increase a little bit because it helps to maintain the endometrium, which is the uterine lining. Now, at some point, if fertilization does not occur, then these hormones are going to start to decrease. And then here we have a fun little time period right before menstruation called PMS. PMS is premenstrual syndrome, and this is when both estrogen and progesterone are decreasing. Both of those hormones play a significant role in mood. When we decrease both of those hormones at the same time, we decrease serotonin, we can increase moodiness and increase irritability and all those fun things that go with PMS. Progesterone actually plays a really significant role in the production of serotonin. Serotonin is a good mood molecule. So when progesterone goes down, serotonin goes down, which can also lead to sugar cravings, which is why chocolate and PMS are so associated. The last thing that I want to mention is that during menopause, when women reach about the age anywhere from about 45 to 55, this cycle will stop and ovulation will not occur anymore. And then estrogen and progesterone will stop cycling. And then I also want to mention, men don't have a menopause, but they do have an andropause in a sense that androgen levels, testosterone levels do decrease with age, but in a much more gradual way than with women. So in males, after about age 40, testosterone levels continue to gradually decline by about 1% every year. So in both males and females, as we get older, fertility decreases. And here's a summary chart for the hormones we talked about.